I'm Dr. David Bell. I'm here with the Partnership for Male Youth. Today, I wanted to talk about viral sexually transmitted infections. Today, it's about herpes, human papillomavirus, also called HPV, and HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus. Most of those are silent most of the time. Herpes, basically for much of its infection sort of stance, it's silent in your body and sort of hanging out. HPV for guys, the only thing that we can show at times are warts, and that's only two of the hundred plus types of HPV that there are. Now, so don't get worried that you have to be worried about all a hundred types of HPV. Really, they're only a subset uh, that we are most worried about, and those are covered by and protected against by getting the HPV vaccine, which is a great thing to do. The third virus, human immunodeficiency virus, for actually up to 10 to 15 years, you can be asymptomatic with HIV. And so it's really important to get tested uh, for HIV and the test is easy. There are usually a couple of different ways, whether it's an oral test, whether it's a saliva test, or blood test in one way, shape, or form. It could be a, as simple as a finger prick. Some guys don't like that. Uh, and sometimes you can get your bloods drawn and sent. So herpes, that's one of most, a lot of guys that get diagnosed have the hardest time with. There's a lot of stigma about herpes. Unfortunately, it's just really a nuisance. It doesn't overall cause chronic problems. It just really causes these sores. Now, there are two types uh, that I think you should be aware of. Type 1 uh, usually causes um, sores around the mouth. At one point, up to 70% of individuals in the country were infected with type 1. And the majority of the way that we got, we got HSV1 was by kissing our family members. It had nothing to do with anything else. Uh, herpes type 2, less people have it as on a percentage, but that's the one that's usually caused uh, by sexual contact. And that's the one that most people, there's a lot of stigma around. Tests for herpes, if you have sores, the best test is to get a swab of those sores, and that can pick up the DNA of it. If you don't have any symptoms, the blood test is not that great. It can be good, but it can create a false positive where it'll say you're positive, but you're not. And there's no way to prove whether you, that you're negative once you get that test. So it's really important to get the blood test within a certain context of what's going on in your life, whether you have a partner that's positive, whether you have symptoms that you're specifically worried about.